Hello everyone, welcome to Pokédex, the channel where I build decks for the Pokémon Trading Card Game. Today we're going to be looking into an awesome Rainbow Road build for Expanded. I've been playing a lot of Expanded, if you have been watching my stream, if not, it doesn't matter. Um, standard is uh, pretty much solved at this point, we know what the good decks are, um, and until the next uh, set, Sun and Moon, comes out. Um, I've been playing a lot of Expanded, um, because there's a lot to brood in that format, I think there's still a lot of cards that um, we haven't looked into, or s still a lot of strategies that can be optimized, and I feel like Rainbow Road uh, still has a lot to it, I think this deck is very good, it has game against some of the best decks in the format, it does struggle a little bit against uh, Trevenant, which is arguably the best deck right now, uh, but maybe there are some changes that we can do. Uh, to help that, I don't know, uh, I, ju I just feel that this deck is, is quite good against um, Ivaltol and Greninja decks, which we've been seeing a lot of, so uh, bear with me, I can talk a little bit more about the matchups uh, at the end, but I'm just going to show you guys the decklist first. So the main attacker here is Xerneas, as I said, this is a Rainbow uh, Road deck, um, Rainbow Force, um, as you guys already know, does 30 more damage for each different type of Pokemon on our bench, so we want a lot of different types, and that's why we're playing a lot of different types of Pokemon in here. Uh, most notably, Oho EX. So Oho EX is the accelerator here, uh, is the whole reason why we play um, a, a lot of different basic energy with this deck. Uh, the ability Rebirth allows us to, if this guy is in the discard pile, we flip a coin, and if it hits heads, we can bring it back into the bench with three different types of basic Pokemon attached to it. Um, it is a somewhat decent to hit knockout attacker because it deals 80 damage, 90 with a fighting fury belt, uh, but it's mostly here to accelerate energy into play that we can then move around uh, mostly into our Xerneas using our uh, four energy switch, we have one scramble switch and then of course we have ninja boy so for instance if you get to Oho on the first turn you can immediately play ninja boy to switch it with a uh, Xerneas EX and if we accelerate the three energy uh, the whole three energy into the Oho EX, which as you guys will see probably in the matches, uh, is quite uh, easy to do using Battle Compressor, which is gas, uh, one of the big one of the biggest cards in in the, um, the expanded format. Um, so this is the core of the deck, um, and because we're kind of forced to play different types of energy with Oho EX so that we can accelerate them into play, we might as well try to play uh, different types of Pokemon that make use of those energy, right? I mean. Um, not only do having different types help with Rainbow Force, it also helps with uh, having a versatility as far as attackers go and game situations go. Uh, so I think we can start off by describing the, the draw card uh, Pokemon, which are <laughs> fairly uh, uh, standard, I mean everyone plays this, everyone knows these, these three guys. It's Upa EX, it's awesome to grab three um, EX Pokemon, a lot of our Pokemon are EXs, it does grab us the Ho-Ho that we can discard and all that. Uh, we have one Jirashi EX, which Stellar Guidance allows us to grab any supporter from the deck, and because we play a lot of one-off supporters that are fairly important, like the for aforementioned Ninja Boy, uh, it is fairly uh, awesome to have the Jirashi EX in here. And two Shaman EX uh, set up, uh, we don't need to play supporter if we have set up <laughs> to be able to draw cards, so it does allow us to do some really uh, awesome stuff like draw cards and then play a Ninja Boy and stuff like that, and that's why we are playing too. Uh, these guys also have the advantage of being all different types, so Shaman is uh, colorless, this guy is um, metal, and Hoopa is psychic, so that's really good. Um, we have a couple of other uh, support Pokemon in here as far as abilities go, so we have one Dark Cry X, Dark Cloak, awesome, uh, if we stick um, Darkness Energy on any of our Pokemon they retreat for free, and that's fairly important here if we get a Pokemon stuck in the active position. Uh, Darkrai is actually sometimes an attacker here too, we only play 3 Darkness Energy but it's easier to get them on Darkrai uh, because of the energy switch, so against decks like Night March usually what we end up doing is starting with the Seismitoad X and then using Darkrai to close up the game because this guy trades really well in prizes uh, if we have an excess of energy in play. Uh, even if they knock out the Darkrai and take two prizes, Darkrai usually knocks out the attacker and a Joltik on the bench, so uh, that ends up trading really nicely with Night March. 
uh, I mentioned uh, size method X, and here it is. Uh, basically, uh, this is a very fair size method deck. Uh, we're not trying to do anything unfair, like remove energies from our opponents and any or anything like that. We're just trying to slow them down a little bit. Uh, but it's mostly here for Night March. Uh, it's like our only counter in the stack. Uh, I think the deck actually uh, pairs really well against Night March. We have some very good um, attackers that are non EXs, and because we accelerate energy, uh, it kind of feels like we have an, an easy time to bring energy into play, like they do, because they only they can they only need to attach a DC. But yeah, if we actually start with Size Method, if we manage to do that, we slow them down so much that it really uh, helps us set up. Uh, uh, the rest of our, of our game. Uh, we have one Ivo Tolliax. In As far as Pokemon go, this guy is like the, the my least favorite one in this deck. Uh, it's one of my favorite cards, don't get me wrong. Evil Ball is an awesome attack in a lot of matchups. There's no way they, they can beat it. Like, for example, if we're facing a Giratina EX, Evil Ball just does a bazillion damage. Uh, the problem is, if we're facing a Giratina deck, we're probably, probably also facing um, energy removal, and we might struggle a little bit with that, or Ivalt all might. But yeah, it's it's a uh, we're already playing the Darkness energy, and we're already playing the DCs, so this guy makes use of both like really well. Uh, it's a very good to hit KO Pokemon. Uh, in this deck, we're not really going to be using uh, Evil Ball to take huge knockouts. We're mostly going to be using Y Cyclone and moving energy into other guys. So it's like. Sometimes we do need, we're not taking a knockout on a single hit, so we do need a two hit KO Pokemon, and Ivaltal does that roll really, really nicely, and that's the reason why it's here. It's also a dark type, it does hit uh, Trevenant for weakness, but once again, Trevenant decks play so many hammers that I don't think Ivaltal EX might save us. I have considered playing the new Giratina promo, the one that locks the break abilities out of this deck, but I haven't really tested that out yet, uh, but I plan on doing so in this deck, like maybe try to take out Ivaltal and uh, test the Giratina, but we are losing a decent attacker in this deck um, because Ivaltal sometimes, as I said, is really, really good. You guys know how, how that works. We have one Salaman CX. This is another... Like, we're playing three different types of energy, and I figured that uh, the last type could be fire, and with just a couple of fire energy, we can power up a Salaman CX really, really easily, and against a lot of matchups, this guy is awesome. Uh, Beastly Fang does... 50 more damage for each of our opponents, Pokemon EX, it's really easy that this guy is doing 160 and with the Fighting Fury Belt that's 170. Uh, if the opponent just has three three measly Pokemon EX in play, like two Shaman and a Hoopa are already three, or an Attacker and a Shaman and a Hoopa are three, um, and 10 base damage plus the Fighting Fury Belt, that's 20 extra, so that's 170 for just um, a fire energy and a double colorless uh, attachment. Once again, we see double colorless um, doing a lot of work here to power up our attackers uh, and allowing us to attack because um, we are playing three types of basic, but actually the DC is like the fourth because we kind of need it uh, in a lot of our Pokemon. So it's kind of like the fourth type of energy that we're playing in this deck. Uh, I already talked about these two guys. There's only one Pokemon left to talk about and that's Execute. Um, it does a couple of interesting things here. Obviously, uh, we can discard it for an Ultra Ball uh, if we don't want to discard anything else from our hand, which is nice. Sometimes we get N down to two cards. One of them is an Ultra Ball, and we can manage to bring the Execute uh, back and then play it from our hand and get a Shaman or something like that. So it's very good in that regard. Also allows us to fill up our bench. It's a different type than any of our Pokemon. Uh, we don't have any Grass types other than Execute, and if, for example, we need to hit the, um, the 6 Pokémon on the bench, which happens a lot because 6 Pokémon is 180, um, so if the opponent has 180 HP, uh, there's no way we can do that with the, the Fighting Fury Belt, because it, it's not enough, so we need the 6 Pokémon on our bench, so we need the, the Stadium, uh, which we play for, uh, and we will talk about that. So we might just drop down and execute. If the opponent trumps the stadium, we discard the execute, and then we can just next turn find another the stadium again and bring execute back and put it down again. So it works really nicely in that regard. It's like the 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 six Pokemon that we always have access to. Um, and that's all the Pokemon. There are a lot. Uh, I mean, there are fifteen, uh, but. We do uh, repeat some um, Xerneas and Oho because they're so important. As far as items go, we start off with 4 Battle Compressor, one if not the most important card in the stack because it allows us to accelerate the Oho EX as I mentioned. Another very important card is the Energy Switch, uh, allows us to make use of the energy that we accelerate into play with the Oho EX. One Scramble Switch is the Ace Pack of choice, it's very useful in the stack as I mentioned, uh, but don't be afraid of discarding it. I mean. 
I, I mostly see it like a, a super energy switch, uh, but it does allow us to do some crazy stun, stunts with Darkrai, because we can actually, if we want to attack with a guy that we have in the active, and we stick a darkness energy in that guy, we can then retreat into a ho-ho, and use scramble switch to bring the energy back again into the, the same guy that we retreated from. So that's really nice, uh, <laughs> a very good uh, ace spec for this deck, I think. We have four trainers mill. Um, we lack the computer search and the the we need we kind of need like a, a very uh, quick uh, way to set up with this deck. We're not playing acrobikes or anything like that, but I figure that four trainers mill are really important here. Uh, we are playing four ultra ball, also one of the most important cards in the deck. Allows us to discard stuff uh, so that we can play our shamans and allows us to get our Pokemon basically back into into the, the the bench. Don't really need to explain too much about that. We have four via seeker. Uh, I love playing via seeker in battle compressor decks, as you guys know, because it allows us to play a lot of one of supporters. And we are playing some here. We are playing one AZ. This is a card that I've thought about cutting a lot of times, but time and time again this saves my life because not only does it allow you to uh, take some damage off of the table, allows you to bring the ho-ho back and discard the energy so that you can ho-ho again, allows you to retreat from a guy that you have no way to put energy on, like a Hoopa that got stranded in the active position. Um, so it does a lot of stuff. It's also an, a draw supporter sometimes. Um, usually it draws three cards like really easily when we bring a Shaman into our hand and play it again immediately we're playing only one lysander would love to pl play two especially with the battle compressor in the jirashi so that we could i don't know battle compress one lysander into the discard pile so that we could via seeker and still keep one in the deck so that we could jirashi for it but the deck is so stuffed that i kind of had to make some cuts and Jira lysander uh, took the, the the hit usually this deck though is so fast that we do have access to lysander uh, but we have to kind of choose where we want it really early so that's kind of a little bit of a, um, uh, an awkward uh, thing uh, but usually we are taking one hit KOs every single turn so it doesn't really matter too much so yeah one Lysander one N sometimes we'd rather shuffle the cards but uh, usually N is just here to punish our opponents plays if they have a, a very good start or if they're playing something like Night March stuff like that N is very good to punish our opponents. We are playing one Ninja Boy. As I said, this guy does a lot of nifty tricks, especially with Oho EX. Bring energy into play and then immediately switch into a Xerneas or a Salamence EX. Uh, it also does something that I've found myself doing time and time again, which is sometimes we have we don't want to play any supporter. So I just stuck like a Shaman back into the deck. And what that does is if we later need to play an Ultra Ball and we need extra card draw, we can do it by putting the Shaman back into the deck and bringing it back again with an Ultra Ball. So that's uh, something to keep in mind with Ninja Boy. Sometimes you don't want to play any other supporter, so we just play this guy. And then we close the, uh, the supporter count with two Professor Sycamore. We are playing two because it's that good. But as you guys can see, most of our draw is based around items, not supporters. So we are only playing two Sycamore. Um, I'd love to play more, mostly because of Trevenant, but I don't really think we can get run away with it. We're just assuming that we're going to be losing to Trevenant, basically, and winning against everything else, because I think we can do it with this deck. We have four Skyfield. This is super important to have. Um, we really need the bench space so that we can, can draw and hit the huge amounts of damage. A lot of people are playing Mega Pokemon, and that's the only way that we're hit dealing more than 200 damage. Uh, Skyfield is super, super nice. So it also plays Counter Stadium. Uh, if the opponent Silent Labs, we have no outs, basically. We're just dead because we can't uh, use Oho, we can't draw. Uh, so we really need this thing. We are playing two Fighting Fury Belts. Um, I also thought about cutting them, but they do a lot of stuff. So they bring our Xerneas uh, up to 160, which is a much, re a much more respectable HP. Um, it's really easy for two hit knockouters to hit 120, like Ivoltal, but 160 requires a little bit more commitment. Rainbow Force does, uh, with f uh, five Pokemon on the bench, does 160, so with a Fighting Fury Belt, that's 170. Sometimes we don't even need a Stadium and an extra Pokemon to knock out an EX. So that's really nice, and that's the reason why Fighting Fury Belt is in here. And as, as far as energy goes, as I said, we're playing a lot of different types. Still only 12 energy, which doesn't, which is not a lot. That's decks that play more. So four double colorless energy, most important energy in the deck. Also allows us to uh, attack with Shaman, allows us to retreat from Hoopa, attack with Seismitoad, uh, power up, powers up uh, Ivoltal, Salamence, and Xerneas. Really nice. So we're playing four of these. And as far as basic goes, we're playing 
three darkness, three fairy, and only two fire. I think it's enough. We only play one Salamence. Uh, it's mostly here for Oho, uh, or for uh, when we need just uh, generic energy. Uh, fire energy does that sometimes. So yeah, that's the deck. Um, I can talk a little bit uh, about the matchups. As I said, I think uh, against Greninja we're highly favorable, just because we take knockout so quickly that I think they have a, a really hard time dealing with our guys and most of the times we're all taking knockouts with non is like Xerneas so they kind of struggle a little bit uh, with that against Ivaltol um, obviously depends on the build because there's so many Ivaltol builds but against the most generic ones uh, I think we're really favored uh, none of them um, Max's uh, targets are that awesome against us um, and if they want to play the two hit KO game we can go with Oho but actually Salamence there is usually uh, awesome. Uh, we have our Ivaltol of our own so that we can move energy around and then we can Xerneas and knock them out. So I think uh, we also are very good against that. Um, yeah, against Trevenant I think it's it's almost an auto loss here. We can maybe try to fit here like the Giratina. As I said, I would start by cutting the Ivaltol maybe. Uh, but it is a, a like we would cut a darkness type but we wouldn't be adding a type because it would be the same type as the, the Hoopa EX because the Giratina is psychic what other cards would I like to add to this deck? I actually thought about adding um, uh, Super Rod because it is a way to bring Pokemon back into the deck that we could later Ninja Boy for again uh, it does seem like it works really well the problem is we are forced to shuffle 3 Pokemon and energy and sometimes, especially in the early game or especially when we need the ho ho to stay in the discard pile it's not great so for that reason I actually tried it out and it was so awkward in some games that I just said I don't know uh, <laughs> I, I, I feel like the, the what we gain by doing the ninja boy stunts is so uh, it's such a corner case most of the times so that we can just get away with not playing the the super rod at all uh, forcing us to shuffle energy back again is kind of awkward but yeah I'd love to double the amount of Lysander I'd love to up the Professor Sycamore count I'd love to up the, up the Ninja Boy count that's all stuff that we can keep in mind so uh, Lysander, extra Lysander would be good extra Ninja Boy, extra Sycamore would also be good but as it is I think the deck is super super stable right now uh, and I think it's really good against a lot of stuff uh, so hopefully the, the matchups that I'm going to show you prove me right uh, let's go play some and see how we fare All right, first match, and it seems like we're already playing against Night March. Like Psychic, Lightning, and Colorless kind of feels like Night March. Might be wrong. Tails, and we lost a coin flip. Is the opponent letting us play first? Uh, yeah, he's going first. A lot of people are playing Getsis these days. We're, we're like, Karen kind of hurts us, so we're not playing Karen or. Ugh. What do I start with here? Uh. Yeah, we, we have the, the Battle Compressor. I'm actually going for the Shaman, and my reasoning is I can Battle Compressor for card draw, like for a Sycamore, and then VS Seeker for it. So I think I need the card draw less uh, because of that, so I'd rather just have an extra flip with a Ho-Ho. Uh, it's kind of what I feel like. Fighting Fury Belt, there we go. Battle Compressor. This guy, it's unfortunate that the opponent already played a, a, a Fighting Fury Belt on the Joltik because I'd love to get a to get an early knockout there with a Shaving EX, bringing it back to our hand with a VCE, but that doesn't sound like it's going to happen. The opponent played an energy on the Joltik, but it only has three Night Marches in the discard pile, so maybe we just go like really speed and we kill his Joltik, or maybe, let's see if we have the Seismic Toad in here. We have two Oho and we have the Seismic Toad, which is great. Also the Hoopa. Um, I will grab a Sycamore, and I think I'll discard an energy, so I think I'm going with the Fire, because it's the most innocuous one, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, what can I do here? Uh, I'm playing the Stadium for sure, because I will discard my hand, and... Um, do I attach the energy to the Shaman? I mean, I kind of have to retreat, right? Uh, or bring it back to my hand. So yeah, I think I will use Rebirth. If this hits, I can use the Energy Switch to maybe retreat with the Shaman. That doesn't happen. 
so yeah, I was just trying to use the energy switch. It doesn't matter too much there, uh, I don't think. Mm, maybe it was even a mistake as I was only bringing one energy with a hole. I don't know. I feel like we have another OHO there, so it would be uh, potentially very good there. Uh, let's play this thing. Let's see what we have. Uh, I can discard this another OHO. Uh, I can go for the energy like uh, one fairy. And what do I discard? Uh, yeah, I will go just for this. Oh, actually, yeah, I actually forgot about the dark. Yeah, I could have discarded another darkness energy, actually. Um, Let's see. So let's use rebirth. We get heads. So we, we do have the scramble switch, which is awesome. So what I think I will do here is play the Hoopa. Yes, I do want to get three Pokemon X. I will get the Seismetal, because it's the one that I'm going to attack with. The Dark Ride, which allows me to retreat, and the Shabin. Um, this way I can actually retreat with a shaman into the hoopa like the sorry the the oho and then use the scramble switch yeah that seems awesome let's discard i guess the end and execute i'd rather have another stadium in hand and let's just grab a xerneas you never know when we want to start attacking with xerneas um sure let's play this thing let's see if we have uh like other ways to re switch energy around or anything like that before we... Okay, we do have an energy switch. Mm. What I think I need here is... Mm, maybe a Fighting Fury Belt would be good. I don't know. I don't... I'm not sure I play it. Uh, I will definitely do this. Uh... Do I want to energy switch here, or do I just... No, I think I just... There's so many options, it's so hard. I think I just scramble switch into the size method and start attacking with it. Yeah, let's just do this. It's, it's It was my plan from the beginning, so... I don't know. I, I, it could have changed, like, depending on our hand, but I think, like... I just want to find, like, a Fighting Fury Belt here. Uh, no Fighting Fury Belt, so we just get the Ultra Ball. Or the Stadium... Because I can discard one. We already have one Ultra Ball in hand. Uh, so next turn we can Ninja Boy away one of the Shamans. And then maybe draw it again with the Ultra Ball. So I think it's just better to get another Stadium now. We also have an Execute that we can bring to our hand to discard in case we need it. Uh, this Joltik I don't think will be knocking out our Seismic to the X. Um, because my opponent only has... Three energy. Oh, Lysander. What? Shaman? I thought he was going for the Xerneas, maybe, because, I mean, it's the most dangerous Pokemon. He's drawing two prizes here, but I don't think he's, like... Yeah, I'll go with the Shaman just because it retreats for free, so why not, right? Uh, we got an AZ. Can we do something with that? I don't know. Uh, I think... I just Ninja Boy into something. Yeah, I don't have any energy there, so not going to go anytime soon. So maybe I just Ninja Boy. Yeah, I think I'm just going to Ninja Boy the Shaman. There, there's so, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm really like taking my time here. There's so many plays that we can do with this deck that it's kind of overwhel overwhelming. Uh, but yeah, I think I just like get the Shaman now. I'll discard the Stadium and I guess the EZ. I have an extra Stadium and Daisy is a supporter that we will not be playing this turn, and maybe ever, so I don't know. <laughs> Do I play the Shemin now? Maybe I energy switch first? I don't know. I, I'm just going to draw. We need to know what we are playing with be before we use our cards like energy switch. So now, we kinda, yeah, we want to play this thing here, so uh, single fairy energy allows us to attack. If the opponent knocks out our Seismetal, uh, oh, that's Battle Compressor, which... Oh, no, no, actually, I'm going for the Fighting Fury Belt. Because, yes, three Pokemon... He's not. I don't really care if he's killing our Seismetal or not, because with the Fighting Fury Belt, we, we're actually killing the Joltik. So, uh, as I said, this is a, one, a Fighting Fury Belt used for the damage and not for the HP. 
So yeah, that's awesome. Let's just quaking punch. If the opponent managed to kill our seismitoad, as I was going to say, uh, we might use the hoho -ho and be able to just uh, energy switch the fairy energy into the Xernia. So I think it's better to just keep it around and not uh, spend the energy switch. Okay, the opponent benches and he plays a stadium. He benches a. Sh uh, I think we discarded the ho ho. Doesn't have any energy on it currently, and we can just bring it back. It's kind of awkward, like opponents playing stadiums over the skyfield, and we instead of discarding the Hoover, we discard other Pokemon. Uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of what you have to do here. So the opponent can hit us for four, so eight eighty damage on the Seismitoad. Uh, we have the Lysander in hand, so if he doesn't play a supporter like an N, we can just bring the. Yeah, this is going to be a good turn for us. So I think I skyfield. Let's play this thing first. Yeah, sure. Let's see what we have. We have a VS Seeker. I'm going to grab it. Uh, might want to grab uh, like a Sycamore or something uh, later. So I'm going to play the Stadium and I'm going to Lysander out that Joltik because this makes it really hard for the opponent to attack. And still, I'm not going to play that Energy Switch. I'm just going to Quaking Punch here. Take another prize. Um, make it just super awkward for the opponent to take prizes and attack us. And we draw the Fairy Energy, which is great. Can just get another Xerneas ready without any other shenanigans if an, the opponent doesn't end us here. But if he does, he's also good, like only drawing four cards, so he actually draws like two extra. Uh, one for the end, another for the card he's missing in his end, uh, up to four. But let's see what he does with Mew. Uh, we might even see like a, a like a miss here. Like yeah, he's just using encounter with Mew, which is a fairly fairly good attack, but uh, I don't think that's what my opponent is looking for. And he grabs a Shaman, which is um, the obvious play, but at the same time it does give us an extra, like a later target for the, the Xerneas to knock out. Um, so the opponent is going to draw, so he's going to draw the card for the turn, and then he plays a Shaman for 3. That's not a lot, like he's not in a very good position. Uh, so maybe I just attach this fairy energy and call it a day, or maybe I attack, attach the dark energy to the dark right, because I feel like it, it will come a point where <laughs> he will play another Joltik and I can hit, hit him on the bench. So maybe that's just better, I don't know. I think, yeah, yeah. I will lie under here, I don't, I don't care. It's going to be really hard. The opponent has to find another Night Marcher. Uh, so... I will not be drawing, like, I don't have the, the option to Lysander out the the, um, the Shaman, but it, it, we are forcing the opponent to, like, he has to attach energy to the Punk Pukabu, he has to commit stuff to his Night March, he has to put another Night Marcher down, and hopefully that Night, the Night Marcher will be Joltik, um, and we can do some sort of, like, two hit, two prize turn with a, a Darkrai. Might be wrong, though, let's see what happens. I don't know. I, I'm okay. He's grabbing two Pokemon, but the Shaman is very bad here. We're still item locking, so we don't really care. And I don't think the opponent is taking a knockout here, so because of the Fighting Fury Belt. Oh, he doesn't even play the energy, the double colorless energy. That's brutal. <laughs> that's really, really brutal. And he actually attached, like he actually put the the Joltik down. So that's awesome. I, right now, I think my play is. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm going to energy switch now because I might get end. And any energy or energy switch later just makes it really good for us. Uh, but I think I will draw here with a Shaman that we have in our deck. What do I discard? Yeah, I'm going to discard the Ultra Ball because I, I don't really have... Oh, I don't have a Shaman. But I... Yeah, oh, I forgot he killed the Shaman with the Lysander. But I do have the Jirashi for that last Sycamore. So I'm going to do that. Um, okay. Forgot the opponent killed our Shaman there in, for a moment, but uh, might as well play the Xerneas. We would be discarding it anyway, so and we have a very healthy hand. Um, I don't need its elements, so I'm not going to put it down, I don't think. Um, yeah, I'm just going to Quaking Punch. I'm going to take another prize. Uh, like this, this item lock is just making the, the opponent's life like really, really hard. And now, if the opponent attacks with a Joltik, which I think would be the right play. We just take the knockout, and if he doesn't, and I don't th even think he's killing us here. What do I discard? I'm just going to go for the excess Pokemon. We only really need like three types of Pokemon to knock out 
for to deal 100 damage, which knocks out any Night Marcher. Uh, maybe we might need to hit like 110 to hit a Shaman, but I think it's really easy to get a... After he takes a knockout, it's really easy to get an Execute and put it down, which is the fourth type, so I think we're fine. I actually think we're fine. So two jol one Joltik and one Pump Kabu. What is the opponent going to do here? I think he's in a very, very bad place right now. Yeah, he actually promotes a Joltik. Um, but at the same time, I'm going to take the knockout on that Joltik. Right? Yeah. Just thinking where I'm going to attach for the turn. I think I'm going for the other Xerneas, because any energy works on the Darkrai. So I think it's just better to attach the, the harder energy to get. Yeah, this Seismatoad is just wrecking his game. There's there's this type of games where Seismatoad is just the, the main thing here. So the opponent kind of has to attach to... Oh, oh my god, he just lost the game. Yep, he just lost it. Because he's not killing the Darkrai even if he lies under it. Yeah, 140 doesn't kill the Darkrai. And now I just promote the Darkrai and kill it. Yeah, the Mew and the Joltik, so... GG's, we don't really need anything else, we just attach to the Darkrai and take the prize. Or the two prizes, which is awesome. I think the opponent needed an extra energy and the Pump Kaboo there. Um, and still, that would be... Uh, I, I still could Lysander out the, the Shaman and kill it, so... Yeah, that's a win for, for our home team, but it, it was a very uh, different game in that we're not doing our main thing, we're attacking with Seismatoad here. Uh, so it does show a little bit of the versatility of this deck, but it doesn't show like the, the main game plan. So I'm going to play another match for you guys. Uh, hold on tight. And here we go for our second match. Seems like we're playing against a Psychic Colorless deck. Let's see what it is our opponent is playing. Maybe it is Trevenant, which as I said, would be definitely a hard matchup. Uh, I see a couple of Mewtwo on that on those sleeves. Hopefully, it's Mewtwo because we have a way better game against that one. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Xerneas. Uh, it is possible that we manage to attack on the first turn. Uh, we do have to find a way to draw cards here because this hand is not enough for the attack on the first turn. Uh, basically, because we either need a Via Seeker. Okay, so we see a Hoopa, so this is not Trevenant at all, for sure. Uh, let's hope, like, I didn't put the Salamence EX down, because I'm kind of hoping that the opponent overcommits uh, EX Pokemon down, and I think if this is Mewtwo, Salamence is going to be awesome. Um, yeah, but we need the way to draw cards, so if your Seeker works, uh, okay, an Ultra Ball works, a Shaman works, a lot of stuff works, so... There we go. So my opponent is going off. It seems. He, yeah, he did. He plays the end. We lose the Salamence, but I'm not too worried about that. I mean, we needed card draw anyway, so hopefully, yeah, we got the end, which is great for us. Um, we also have a Darkness Energy that allows us to retreat. Which is also fine. Opponent plays a Shaman for two. I hate playing Shamans for two myself. Um, but yeah, let's see what this trainer mail gives us. Um, got a Lysander. Yeah, I think I'll get it because I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to play the Sycamore. And this way I just discard this guy. So I'm going to put down all of this and I'm going to play the Sycamore. I won't play the, the energy. Because, yeah, we, as you see, we just drew, like, a uh, DCE. So this way, we might hit Ho Ho and find a switch right here and just bring three energy back into play, which would be awesome. Um, I'm going to discard this Ho Ho. Yep. And I think I discard this too. Uh, there's an argument for... Um, yeah, there's an argument for uh, using the Ho-Ho first before discarding, but I, I was going to discard that Ho-Ho anyway, so I don't really think that's a huge argument. Um, I don't even think this makes a lot of difference, but yeah, it does allow me to hit 170, so maybe... Yeah, I'm going to attach to the bench. 
I don't think we're going to attack this turn, <laughs> although it is possible that we manage to pull off the everything. Uh, I think it's still going to be hard to. Uh, I, I think we want to lie under something in the same turn that we attack. So yeah, I think I, I'm going to ho ho here. We have the stadium and everything, and we hit heads, which is awesome. Next turn, oh, I, we can't ninja boy because we have the the last Xerneas, but we can ninja boy for the Salamence though. So maybe that's something to keep in mind. We have to retreat from this Xerneas. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. The thing is, I feel like I wanna I want to attack on the same turn that I uh, Lysander out my opponent's Mewtwo, or maybe the, the 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 opponent just pulls the trigger and brings the Mewtwo to the active position. If not, I'm just going to be forced to use a Via Seeker uh, to shuffle stuff back because I need stuff and um, I don't want to play the Seeker more because I don't want to discard all these Via Seekers. So let's see what happens here. The opponent's taking quite a long time. Okay, so he, the opponent ends, which is awesome for us actually. Uh, I'd much rather have a different set of six cards because this one was kind of iffy. Okay, this is a guaranteed. Uh, well, no it isn't. If the opponent, yeah, that's cool. The opponent is going to attack us. I mean, I don't need to Lysander. So maybe I get to... Okay, there is a way to power up a Xerneas. The Scramble Switch only allows us to move energy into the active. So, in order to pull this off, we have to go like okay let's play the battle compressor first we know for sure that we're playing this so might as well um, yeah another fire because fire energy is the one that we care about the least I think yeah um, although we have Oho in the deck already in the discard already so maybe I just grab this too yeah I, I, I really don't know Actually, this was wrong, because I'm going to play this DC, aren't I? I don't know. <laughs> this is, like, there's so many options with this deck, and I'm still learning how to play it, that, I don't know, feels like I might be making some mistakes. But, oh well, let's keep going. Uh, I think we just grab the Salamence and the Ho-Ho, maybe, yeah, the Jirashi as well, uh, yeah, because... I, I don't think there's any point in keeping it in the deck. Uh, um, so I discard the Hoho -Ho and the Jirashi, so I don't bring the Execute back to my hand. Uh, I'm just getting an, the, the last Xerneas, and I've got the Salamence. Yeah, but I need to play the energy to be able to attack, because I need to play the DCE on the Xerneas, on the active, and retreat from it to the Ho-Ho, and then use the Scramble Switch, I think. I mean, I'm losing energy, is that good? And then I'm hitting for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 with the Salamence. Yeah, that's enough for a knockout. So yeah, I, I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do that and hope that's enough. So I just retreat into the Ho-Ho. I scramble switch into the Xerneas. I could go for the one that has damage, but might as well just uh, keep as many. Yeah, this is enough. One, it's seven. So might as well just. We could ho ho again. Like, is yeah, it hits nice. So we're bringing two energy back. Uh, I think. We already have a Xerneas and a Salamence, uh, so we're just going to run both force here. We're not playing the Sycamore, so that we keep the Xerneas if the opponent knocks this one out. And this way I think we are covering our bases pretty well. This Darkness Energy allows us to retreat. Maybe I could have, uh, like, I don't know, I, I might have played this wrong. Once again, this is like very complicated, but yeah, so I'm just going to discard like... Um, 
can discard Ho Ho because I can bring it back. I think I'm going to do that. I discard the one that doesn't have fairy energy on it. I can go for this Xerneas that has damage, but maybe just going for a Hoopa. Like it, it, it has weakness, so might as well. And also shaming because 110 for two prizes is just too good for my opponent. So. And right now. Okay, N. Uh huh. That's okay. That's fine. Don't care too much. Maybe I draw a stadium out of this. So. No, no stadium. I yeah, maybe shouldn't have discarded that Shirashi now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe that was important to keep. Oh, but the opponent concedes, so <laughs> I guess just taking that knockout was uh, enough. Uh, the opponent didn't respect our uh, KO potential at all. But as you guys see, I mean, this is a very complicated deck to play, and I might have made some mistakes, so I, I think I'm going to play another match for you guys. Just hold on tight. Alrighty. Third match, and are we playing against Night March? I saw a water type there, so maybe it's some sort of water tech like Empoleon or something like that. I don't know. Don't really know what's uh, in my opponent's deck. Yeah, I'm going to start Night uh, Seismitude because I really suspect my opponent is playing Night March. I know it's kind of cheating, like looking at the the typings and um, since we're going second, like starting with the Xerneas would also be nice. But I will put it down. I'm not playing down the Ho Ho Yax though. <laughs> uh, it's great if the opponent is playing Night March because he just has his first turn and then oh okay, Manetric Yax. Yep, I guess that's a card. Uh, so this is not Night March. Um, that's kind of surprising, but at the same time, it's interesting. So hopefully, we can still get a win. I have a feeling that my opponent is playing a deck that base is based around a lot of EX Pokemon, so maybe Salamence is going to be good. We'll see what my opponent does. So Flash Energy Attachment. I don't have Hammer, so it doesn't really matter. And then a stadium, which I'll happily bounce once I find my own. Ultra Ball, so my opponent is going to shame in for a lot. Okay, grabs Hoopa. Uh, so maybe he goes Manetric, Manetric, Shaman. Even he just gets the Mega, maybe, because uh, if we're going to Shaman, hopefully hoping to draw the Mega, I might as well just get the Mega, right? Because then it's guaranteed. Yeah, that's what the opponent does. Maybe he already has a Spirit Link, but hasn't played it before. Manetric definitely comes down, and then... Okay, so he plays a Shaman. No Spirit Link for now, so we see a setup. Drank three cards. Not that bad. I mean, play an Ultra Ball. This is like one of the worst draws possible. Um, so I'm going to Ultra Ball. Do I have the Hoopa? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to play the Hoopa. Yes, I want to get grab three Pokemon Yak. So um, I'm going. No, I'm not going for the Ho Ho because um, I don't have a way to discard. So I'm just going for the Salamis, Darkrai, and Shaman to draw three cards. Although, yeah, I have the hand N here. So I, I think I'm going for the Jirashi actually, because I can N and it's six new cards instead of only three. And I'd rather shuffle back these things that I have in my hand, because I don't have a use for them. So put down the Darkrai, because I need the ability. Salaman CX seems great. The opponent already has three Pokemon down, or four uh, EX Pokemon down, actually. So I'm just going to get grab the N, play it, and hope for a better hand. Like we need a Stadium and we need a Battle, battle Compressor, basically. That's the most important things. Okay, we get a battle compressor. Um, do I trainer's mill first? I think, like, it's kind of hard. Uh, I think, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm going to battle compressor first. Get rid of cards. The thing is, sometimes we need to see what we draw out of the trainer's mill first, but we kind of need to be assured to hit. So I'm going to put a, I think, yeah, a dark and a, 
fairy which are the ones that I want to accelerate the most and oh yeah we we fail with the trainer's mail so yeah um what do I even do now I mean we have the VS seeker for next turn uh so that we can end but do I attach a fire to the Salamence? Or maybe I just go, yeah, dark into the Seismetal so that next turn I can retreat. Yeah, this seems like the um, best way to play this for now. Okay, so now we see the Spirit Link. My opponent held on to the Spirit Link, which, as you should in, in Expanded, I guess. What? No Mega? He has the mag in hand, I saw it last turn. Did he discard them? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't even know what's going on. Maybe he just thinks that he doesn't want to mega right now, he just wants to. Manetri. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. As of to what my opponent is thinking, but okay, we'll take 60. <laughs> we don't really care too much about that. We heal 30 with the stadium. Um, and uh, I'm definitely going to be playing N. We need to draw the stadium or else we are not doing anything else here. Yeah, we really need that fucking stadium. Okay, so grabbing the N, that's for sure. I'm playing the N, didn't attach um, but I think that's better because yeah we got the stadium so if we hit we can actually attack with our uh, if we hit a ho-ho we can actually attack because we have uh, energy s switch so and scramble switch also so let's go ho-ho Rebirth! Yeah, we hit heads, that's perfect. So bam, bam. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's enough. So I retreat into the ho-ho. I scramble switch, because I just use a single card. And I'm going for the Salamence first, because the, um, the Xerneas always has the potential to one-hit KO, but the Salamence, once the opponent starts um, getting low on EX Pokemon, uh, do I play this thing? I'm kind of scared of an end, but at the same time we're drawing four cards, so it's more than... No, oh, it's not more, because we're going to draw two prizes. Okay, so I'm just going for this. So I, I went for the Salamis now, because my opponent is going down on one EX anyway, so might as well just make the most out of Salamence while we can. The opponent took a huge swing here, because losing two energy is pretty hard he also lost the spirit link and now he's going for the the um, <laughs> the regice but i think regice doesn't do much here not even attacking with ex pokemon if we want yeah this thing looks at ex is not i i love my hand so i, I i'm actually going to show like put this energy here i'm Going to play the trainer's mail. Okay, we got Lysander. That's cool. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is still really hard. Like, I don't really know. I play the Lysander just beastly thing because this way I keep Lysander in my hand, right? So maybe I just via Seeker. Yeah, I'm going to AZ this turn, like trying to make the most out of my hand. Like, get a Jirashi out of there and just beastly fang here. Uh, then if my opponent plays N, I have Jirashi back in the deck, which I think is better than having a Via Seeker, because I can grab Jirashi with um, with an Ultra Ball. So I think it's slightly, slightly better than having the Via Seeker. It's arguable, but yeah. Maybe I should have lies under the Manetric, but I, the opponent still had another, so... You can still like play an energy, spirit link, evolve, and then mega turbo. Um, but I don't think that kills us. I just think that that also has to be followed by an N. Oh, so are we seeing? No, Team Flare Grunt, huh? Which energy are you removing? Because if you go, you have to go for the fire. Yeah, it has to go for the fire. But then I can retreat for free, which is awesome. So 
and I can maybe also Oho and attack again, but I don't really want to do that. I think I want to start attacking with the, the Xerneas right now. Yeah. Even if you get my energy. Like even if you get the abilities I could still retreat. So this is this is great I think. Just going to maybe I could have used the energy switch, but it doesn't matter, so I'm just going to retreat here. So we have one, two, three. We still have we still need another one, yeah. I'm just going to play the this thing, grab whatever, ninja boy, sure. Uh, and I'm just going to attack. I'm not even going to play anything else, just taking care of business here. And that's it. Uh, like sometimes I stumble a little bit. Once again, it's uh, it's so many options that it's kind of over overwhelming at times playing this deck. But I think like uh, I think this is enough to showcase how good the deck is, how versatile and how flexible it is. Uh, hope you guys enjoy this. Tell me what you think about the deck in the comments below. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye.